Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Freeing ERP series on Profit 21. Today we're going to be looking at replenishment methods for your items. Now, Profit 21 has a fairly complicated set of controls for purchasing. One of the key decisions you have to make for every item location combination is the replenishment method. This is the setting that determines how P21 is going to calculate the suggested quantity to purchase, whether you're running PORG or looking at the purchase stock card in Item Master Inquiry. So today we're going to look at the four basic options for item replenishment. We're going to talk about what they do, how they work, and when you should use them. You set the replenishment method from item maintenance. So we're going to go ahead and bring up our claw hammer. And once it's loaded up, we're going to go ahead and go over to the replenishment tab for location 10. And location 10 is our central distribution center. And you can see we currently have this replenishment method set to up to. Now up to is a replenishment method that's based on the principle of just bringing inventory back to a specific quantity. The primary factors that you have to deal with are the item's lead time, the supplier's review cycle, and the item's safety stock setting. And there's some other secondary factors out there as well that are multipliers against the other three factors. So it allows you to change the effective value of each of those as you go along, and you typically decide this when you're running PORG. What up to does is implement a lead time horizon calculation. This determines the appropriate stock level for each item. In order for up to to work reasonably well, consistent usage history is needed. So a good starting point is that the item needs to have usage in 8 out of the last 12 months. Up to is not going to be a good fit for sporadic items, and that would be defined as anything moving in 7 or fewer months out of the last 12. The reason for this is that forecasting formulas are not that consistent when there's not enough usage to feed into them. When we look at the purchase stock card for this item, you can see there's quite a bit going on, but the up to calculation is all done in the order point area. So what this is looking at is a lead time of 150 days plus a review cycle of 30 days, meaning we're looking at it once a month, plus an additional 21 days for safety stock. This calculates out to needing 201 days of inventory. So the forecasted usage during that period is 63,442. That's the calculated order point. The important thing to understand about up to is that the lead time is moving based upon purchase order receipts, the review cycle can be moved based upon how often you want to order, and the safety stock can also move based upon how much safety stock you want to carry. So you have to take all three of these factors together to figure out exactly how the up to calculation is going to work. Alright, next let's take a look at the same item but for location 15. So when we go to location 15, what we see is this one is set to EOQ. EOQ stands for Economic Order Quantity. This method has been around for about 100 years, and it's designed to achieve the lowest overall inventory cost. And it does that by accounting for your carrying cost and the cost of ordering an item. We have a deep dive article on EOQ here on freeingerp.com if you want to understand all of the details that calculate EOQ. The main thing to understand about EOQ is that Profit21 implements this as a spin-off of up to. And what that means to you is you want to use it for the same types of items. Those are the ones that have regular usage, meaning 8 out of the last 12 months have some sort of usage. You can also use EOQ for items that have a very, very low unit cost that you don't want to be purchasing over and over again. You can see under order point that the EOQ calculation to determine the order point is the same as it was in up to. Where the difference is, is in order quantity. When you look at the order quantity area, you can see where the EOQ calculation is made. And what it's doing is looking at the cost of order and the carrying cost to make the determination how many you should buy to achieve the lowest overall inventory cost. The last thing to know about EOQ is that it needs to be implemented based on your company's inventory strategy. If your company's inventory strategy is based largely on managing cash flow and minimizing the inventory value, then EOQ is probably not going to be a good fit for you. But if your company is willing to take on more inventory to achieve a lower total cost, then EOQ might be a good fit. The next replenishment method we're going to talk about is min-max. And when we look at the settings for location 11, we can see that it is set up to use min-max. We show the min as being 10,000 and the max of being 20,000. Min-max is a static replenishment method, and what I mean by that is there's no accounting for lead time usage or any of the other variables that go into an up-to calculation. It's a completely fixed number based upon your decisions about what the min and the max need to be. So if you had to sum up the min-max calculation, it would be a statement that sounds like, 
When the net available inventory drops below the min, order enough to get back up to the max. You can see on the purchase stock card that what it's doing is testing the net stock against the min, and if it's below the min, it's going to purchase enough to get back up to the max. There are good uses for min-max in a Profit 21 system. For instance, you may want to fix the inventory levels regardless of what the actual usage is. This may come into play if you have some contractual obligation or something like that for a customer. It can also be used when the item is new. In this case, you don't have any usage history to go off of, so you can use this to peg a starting inventory until you get enough history built up to switch the item to up to. And the third use case would be that the item is very sporadic. It doesn't sell in 8 out of the last 12 months, so you have to set a quantity and go with it because up to can't be used reliably. The last replenishment method you have available is order point order quantity. And we just so happen to have that one set up on location 28. Now in this location you can see the replenishment method setting and we've set the order point to 1000 and the order quantity to 3000. Note that this uses the exact same fields that min and max use. The way the OPOQ calculation works is when the net available inventory falls below the order point, the system reorders the order quantity. And the use cases for this are very similar to those in MinMax, and you may also have an additional use case if you're dealing with an odd vendor minimum purchase quantity. Since the two methods are so similar, I don't recommend mixing them too much because it starts to cause user confusion. So if you're going to use MinMax, you want to stick with that as much as possible. Or if you're going to use OPOQ, then stick with that one as much as possible. You can see in this example that since our order point is 1,000 and the net stock is less than 1,000, that it's automatically triggering an order for the purchase quantity of 3,000. So that's about all there is to the replenishment methods in Profit 21. Just to sum it up, you have up to, which you're going to use for regular sellers. That's usage in 8 or more out of the last 12 months. And its calculation is based on the lead time review cycle and safety stock. Next you have EOQ, which functions very similar to up to, except that it takes into account the order and the carry cost. And this is trying to drive you to the lowest total cost of inventory. Min and max is your third method. The way that one works is when the net inventory falls below the min, it's going to order back up to the max. So you can use this for new or sporadic usage items, or if you want to fix a quantity in inventory and not worry about what the usage is. The last one you have is order point order quantity, very similar to min max. When the net inventory falls below the order point, it's going to buy the order quantity. You'll use this for basically the same types of items as min max, or if you have a strange vendor minimum order requirement, you can use it there too. Thanks for watching this Profit 21 tutorial video on freeingerp.com. We hope to see you back again soon.